Hi! In this video, we're going to be talking about making drum sounds inside of Voltage Modular, which is a lot of fun and a really easy way to build up your own custom sample library. For the sake of time today, I'm going to be showing you a few basic recipes to create kicks, snares, hats, and percussion sounds right inside of Voltage Modular that you can then tweak and experiment with to create your own unique sounds. So let's start things off by taking a listen to a few of the sounds. First up here, we have a nice synth kick drum sound. Next up, I've got a really tight electronic snare. Here we have some hi-hat sounds. And finally in this patch here we have some nice dubby electronic percussion. So as you can hear, Voltage Modular is more than capable of designing a wide variety of drum sounds pretty easily. Everything I'm showing you here today can actually be done inside of Voltage Nucleus and that's actually what I'm using, so feel free to follow along as we go. So let's start things off nice and easy and take a look at creating a basic kick drum sound. To begin here, we really only need a handful of modules. Let's start things off with an amplifier. We'll grab an envelope generator. We'll grab a filter, place that after the amplifier, and then we just need to find an oscillator. Much like your standard subtractive synth patch, a lot of drum patches are pretty straightforward and use a lot of the same thing. So once we create one of these, we can actually create a lot of drum sounds using the same rack. So let's kick things off by wiring up the kick drum here. We're just gonna need to do the basics first. Let's grab the gate here for the envelope. We'll wire the envelope out to the CV end of the amplifier. And then for the input, let's actually use a square wave. Now, most people might use a sine wave, but I find a square wave works better because typically you end up distorting a kick drum and that pushes the sine into kind of a square wave anyway. So this just saves you a little bit of time. Next, we'll take the output of the amplifier to the audio end of the filter. We'll grab the low pass output and bring that into the main outs here. We'll engage the limiter just for safety because drum sounds can get pretty loud. If we played this right now, we'll have just a flat square wave sound. And this is actually pretty close to what we need, we just need to shape the sound a little bit. To begin, let's take our envelope generator here and make this nice and short. We can double click on the decay here and let's set this to maybe 180 milliseconds. I find this is usually a good ballpark value to start things off at. We'll add a bit of release here as well, we'll go for about 90 milliseconds. And if we play this now... So now we're starting to get into kick drum territory and we need to filter this off. So let's drop the filter nice and low. We'll make sure this is on 24 dB mode and somewhere at around maybe 100 hertz should be a good starting point. So right there at about 88 hertz, that seems to be a good value. Now this isn't quite sounding kick drummy and that's because we don't really have a defined transient or that initial click that a kick drum has. And this is actually really easy to create using another envelope generator. If you think about the sound of a kick drum, when you first hit it, it's very high in pitch and then it gets very low in pitch. And if you think about the shape of that, we can use an envelope generator. So let's grab our envelope generator here. I'll hold Alt and click and drag to duplicate it. And we'll grab the gate here once more. And then we'll send the envelope out to the frequency mod end of the oscillator. We can get rid of the release and increase the frequency mod a pretty good amount. And then we'll start experimenting with the decay value. And this will determine the length of that pitch drop. So right about at 130 milliseconds seems to be good. Another good idea is to take the same envelope out here, so we'll click on it to open up the jacks, and send this to frequency mod 1 of the filter and add a bit of mod to that as well. And there we go, we've got a really classic basic kick drum sound. From here you could experiment with the frequency by dropping it down an octave and maybe changing the frequency here with this knob. You could change the filter cutoff. You could add a lot of resonance and make it even lower. This can give you some really classic zappy kick sounds. And that's all there is to making a kick. Now another great idea is to save these patches but add a few macros so you can quickly then come back to these patches and just generate a bunch of sounds that you can save in your own library. To add a macro to the performance panel here, let's add a few basics like the tuning and maybe the filter cutoff and resonance. To do that, we can right click on the frequency here and we'll go to perform assign and knob one. Let's do the same for the cutoff, so perform assign and knob two and resonance perform assign knob three. Now we've got these controls, so when we open this up, we don't have to rewire it, we have it ready to go, and we can quickly tweak a few parameters to get a variety of kick sounds very quickly. Let's move on to making a snare drum, and a snare drum is largely the same patch. All we need to add is the rattling of the snares, which we can do with a noise generator. Let's unwire the filter here, because we're going to use that later on for the noise, so we'll move it next to that. 
Then we'll highlight this amplifier and envelope generator, hold Alt, and drag them over to copy them. For the sake of clarity, let's move some modules around just so we can get a better idea of what exactly is happening. I'm going to reset this filter here. We'll grab the filter, noise generator, amplifier, and envelope here and drag them down. So what I've got set up is the tone of the snare here and then the noise of the snare here. Let's move this noise generator back and then start wiring up this section. So we'll grab the gate. We'll send the envelope out to the CV and of the amp. The input is going to be white noise. We'll take the output into the filter and then we're going to use the high pass out. Now, in order to blend these two things together, we can utilize the mixer. So we'll grab the six input mixer here and wire this up as well. We'll take the tone into input one and the output of the high pass into input two. Then we'll take the master output to the main output here. By using the mixer module, this gives us a lot more detailed control over the final sound. So now that we've got this set up, let's solo out this noise layer here, so input two, and start working on it a bit. This is going to be pretty straightforward. All we really need to do is shape the decay here. Right now, it seems about right. Let's open up the attack so we can let a bit more of the transient through from the tone, and then start adjusting the filter cutoff. A little touch of resonance there, and let's unsolo this and see what we've got. So now we just need to change a few things in this tone section. Let's move the square over to the sine wave and bring it up in pitch. We'll go up maybe two octaves and start tweaking the frequency. Maybe change the pitch envelope here. Maybe bring it up even higher and get more of like a drum and bass type snare. And then we just need to tweak the tone decay. So I want to make this a little bit shorter and tune it. Cool, and then we can adjust the decay of the noise. Drum sounds take a lot of tweaking to get right, but as you can see, we've got a basic snare rack here. So once again, we can add some macros to the performance panel, save this patch, and generate a whole bunch of sounds very quickly. Next up, let's move on to some hats and cymbals. Now these can get very, very complicated, but I wanted to show you a really easy, basic kind of synth recipe you can use to get started creating hi-hats and cymbal sounds. Just like we did with the kick patch, we can actually recycle the snare patch to start making some cymbals. So let's begin by deleting this first envelope generator here and duplicate this oscillator out a couple times. So we'll hold Alt, click and drag, Alt, and click and drag. Usually I like to do about three or four oscillators for this, but it really is up to you and how you want to approach it. Next up, we're gonna start doing a bunch of FM with these oscillators. So let's grab the square wave here and send this to the frequency mod of the second one and the second one into the third and then the third back into the first. By creating this really complex FM path, we end up creating this brittle, harsh, noisy, metallic thing, which is exactly what we want for hi-hats and cymbals. Let's bring all these up to the highest octave, that way they're nice and bright. And then let's duplicate this filter. We'll hold Alt and bring it up after this amplifier. To wire this up, we'll take the output here and change it over to the high pass output of the filter. And then we'll take the output of the amplifier into the audio input of the filter. From here, we can adjust the cutoff slightly and let's mute the second input of the mixer. This way, we're only going to hear these square waves that are being FM'd. If we play this now, it's gonna be a little bit brittle, but we'll take the output of this third oscillator here and put it into the input of the amplifier and take a listen to what we have. To get that really classic metallic sound, the important thing is to detune these oscillators. Then adjust the amount of FM being applied. Once again, this takes a lot of fine tuning to get right, but I think this is pretty close. We'll just increase the cutoff of the filter and maybe add a bit more resonance. And that's sounding a bit more metallic hi-hat-ish. It could use a bit more tweaking, but we're just going to go with it. Now let's drop the envelope here just a little bit to make it nice and short. And then we'll unmute the second input of the mixer and start shaping our noise. Since we already did this with the snare, it's pretty much good to go as it is. But we might just tweak a few things to shape it. So we'll go for a bit more cutoff here on the filter. And maybe just change this envelope a little bit. And there we go. From here, we could easily add a performance control to the decay of the noise and this envelope generator here, which is controlling the FM squares. That way we can get a closed hat and open hat. And you can quickly generate a whole bunch of hats.
Finally, let's move on to talk about creating some modular percussion hits. Now, there are a lot of ways to approach this and a lot of different sounds you can get, but I just wanted to give you a basic idea that you can run with and experiment with because when it comes to the percussion side of things, when it comes to modular drum design, it's really all about just experimenting. To begin, let's go ahead and delete the six input mixer and delete this bottom row. We're really only going to need the top row here. And let's just unwire these by clicking and dragging them and moving them out of the way. We'll get rid of pretty much everything except the envelope amplifier and filter wires. When it comes to modular percussion, I usually like to go with just straight up FM. I find it provides pretty good results pretty quickly. So let's take the output of this third oscillator. We'll do the sine wave output into the input here. We have the output of this going into the filter. So let's take the band pass out of the filter to the main output and drop this down maybe at about 1K or so. Now this by itself is really not bad. You could take this sound, put it through a nice delay or a reverb, and you would have a nice kind of modular percussion blip. But we can take this a couple steps further by utilizing some other oscillators with FM. Generally, you really only need two oscillators and you can get a pretty big array of sounds out of that. So let's take the sine wave output here into the frequency mod of this oscillator, drop it down, and maybe drop the octave. And you can see just by adjusting the frequency mod, we can get a pretty wide variety of timbres to this sound. We could experiment with the envelope here. We can make it even shorter. We can make it relatively long with an attack. We're almost getting kind of a weird alien cowbell there. And then we can introduce the third oscillator here. Let's take the frequency mod from, let's do the saw wave and then experiment with the octave of that. Maybe up this a little bit. Drop the resonance. We could drop the attack once more and drop the octave here. We could even add some key tracking by inputting the pitch to maybe one or two of these oscillators and then detune them a bit. And this way by playing different keys on my keyboard, I can get different percussion sounds. So that is a brief overview on creating drum sounds inside a voltage modular nucleus. It's a lot of fun and like I said, once you save these patches, it's very easy to come back and just create a whole bunch of drum sounds in one sitting that you could then bounce out, put into your favorite sampler and use in your tracks. And I think that wraps it up for this video. For more information on voltage modular or to pick it up for yourself, you can head over to cherryaudio.com.